Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have p of p of x equals 4x plus 7 and p of q of x equals negative 6x plus 5. px and qx are polynomials, so this could be considered a functional system as well with functions being some special type. So, if you consider the result from here, we get p of p of x. So, a polynomial composed with itself gives us 4x plus 7. How is that possible? So there's, there are some different possible scenarios. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. But first of all, here's one thing I want you to consider. With polynomials, one of the most important things to talk about is the degree. The degree of the polynomial gives us a lot of information and a lot of clues for problem solving. In this case, we are composing a function or polynomial with itself. So what is that supposed to mean? Suppose you had p of x equals x squared plus 1. I'm just testing. It doesn't have to be the same p of x. If you don't like this, change it into, I don't know, t of x or something like that. Or a of x. How about that? Let's do it so people don't get confused. They're going to say, how did you change the p of x? Okay, suppose we have a polynomial a of x equals x squared plus 1. And I want to compose a with itself. So it's kind of like a of a of x. How do you evaluate that? Well, just replace the x with a of x, which is x squared plus 1. And by using the definition of a of x, this gives you x squared plus 1 squared plus 1. And then from here, you get x to the fourth power plus 2x squared plus 1 plus 1 is going to give you 2. So now notice that when I compose a with itself, I got a quartic polynomial. a was quadratic, then the degree just doubled. If I take a cubic and compose it, with itself, I'm going to be getting something 6 power. So it's basically going to, uh, well, I shouldn't say double. Uh, so if you had a cubic polynomial, let's, let's think about another scenario. Like suppose b of x is equal to x cubed, then b of b of x would be b of x cubed, and that would equal x cubed quantity cubed, and that would be x to the ninth power. So the power basically is the square of the degree. So now here we have a linear result. What is that supposed to mean? The degree of this polynomial is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. That means that p of x needs to be linear. All right? So that's the first assumption we have to make. Otherwise, we're going to have to go through infinitely many possibilities, and obviously none of them is going to work, except for the linear case. So p of x needs to be linear. Let's go ahead and solve the first equation first. This is not something you can do elimination or substitution with yet. Let's go ahead and find out p of x first. So... If p of x is linear, can I write it as ax plus b, right? Where obviously a is not equal to 0, so on and so forth. Now, if you compose p with itself, which is p of p of x, we're supposed to get 4x plus 7. Now, I've replaced p with ax plus b, and you're supposed to get 4x plus 7. Now, apply the definition of p to ax plus b, so that's going to be 8 times the quantity ax plus b, plus b. So that's, and you can keep doing this. Sometimes you're going to have a problem like f of f of f of dot 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 n times. That's basically what it means. Okay? And of course, in these cases, hopefully, there's some type of pattern. Otherwise, it's going to take, it's going to be crazy. All right. So let's go ahead and distribute a squared x, and then I get a b plus b. Let's go ahead and factor out b. So that's going to give us a plus 1 in parentheses. This is going to make a uh, solution easier. So now we have the following, and what is that supposed to mean if two polynomials are equal for all values of x? That means the coefficients of x are equal and the constant terms are equal. So from here we get two results, a squared equals 4, that means a is equal to 2 or a is equal to negative 2. Obviously there's no reason why we would pick one over the other, so we're going to consider both. If a is equal to 2, I can just go ahead and substitute that here. Well, this is supposed to equal 7. And if a is 2, then I'm getting something like 3b equals 7. And this implies that b is equal to 7 thirds. From the second one, I get a nicer expression. If a is equal to negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So I get negative b equals 7, which implies b equals negative 7. So this a value should be taken with that b value, and the second one should be taken with the second value. So we, this gives us two options, okay, two cases. Let's take a look at both cases. Case number one. Case number one is where a is 2 and b is 7 thirds. And that gives us p of x equals 
2x plus 7 thirds. Now, you can obviously test this, like plug it in, for example, if I had to do the composition of this with itself, you'll notice that it works. You get 4x plus 14 thirds plus 7 thirds, which is 21 thirds, and that is equal to 7. And obviously, the other one is going to work as well. So you can test it. You don't have to, but it just shows you that you got it right. So now, p of x can be this one. And what about the q of x, right? Well, p is composed with q, and you know the composition is from right to left. So p of q of x, let's go ahead and write that down as an equation. p of q of x is given to us as negative 6x plus 5, right? So we're supposed to find q of x from here where when p of x is equal to 2x plus 7 thirds. So let's go ahead and apply the definition of p to q of x. That gives us 2 times q of x plus 7 thirds is equal to negative 6x plus 5. Obviously, there's more than one way to do it. You could also assume that, hey, q of x must be a linear polynomial as well. And sup uh, suppose we call it mx plus n, substitute, solve for m and n, and so on and so forth. But I just wanted to do it this way because it's kind of cooler. Anyways, so you can go ahead and solve for q of x, isolate it, subtract 7 thirds, 15 minus 7 is 8, so it's going to be negative 6x plus 8 thirds. And then you can just divide everything by 2 here to find q of x, and that is going to be negative 3x plus 4 thirds. So for this p of x value, we get this q of x value. That gives us a solution as an ordered pair. And we're going to write these at the end, so don't worry about uh, keeping track of them right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second case. Now, remember, the second case involves a being equal to negative 2. So if a is equal to negative 2, then this gives us what? It should give us a b value, and it did, right? It was b equals negative 7. Great. So b equals negative 7 in this case. So that gives us p of x as negative 2x minus 7. Okay, great. Now, I want to use my q of x equation again one more time. p of q of x is given to be uh, is given to be equal to, what is that equal to? Okay, p of q of x is given as negative 6x plus 5. Okay, negative 6x plus 5. So now I'm going to replace the x here with q of x and on the right hand side as well. So it's going to give me negative 2 times q of x minus 7 is equal to negative 6x plus 5. Again, this solution avoids the assumption that q of x uh, equals mx plus n, but it's pretty much the same thing. So add 7 to both sides, and then divide both sides by negative 2, and you get q of x equals 3x minus 6. So if p of x is equal to negative 2x minus 7, then q of x is equal to 3x minus 6. Let's go ahead and write down the solution or solutions as ordered pairs. So the solutions are going to look like this, with px being the first one. If px is 2x plus 7 thirds, then q of x is going to be negative 3x plus 4 thirds. And if p of x is equal to negative 2x minus 7, then q of x is going to be 3x minus 6. And let's not forget to close the braces because I believe last time I forgot to brace, uh, close the braces. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in, I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.